I I fought through with half a voice. <laughs> oh no. I <laughs> I have fought through the race with half a voice and a cold to miss that I'm assuming Lambo won the race in that hundred meters that I missed for my internet to just completely reset for no reason <sighs> anyway welcome to commentators corner Hungarian Grand Prix um, Oh dear, that was uh, that was an ordeal. Well, <laughs> I've, oh my goodness, I've got three sets of music going on right now. Oh, oh dear. Anyway, um, because I didn't get to uh, go through the running order of the race because my internet crashed, uh, it was Squeezy who won the race. Uh, Lambo in second, Jay in third, Poe fourth, Technique fifth. Spike in 6th, Maze in 7th, Sean 8th, Hamilton 9th, Lighty in 10th, Steph 11th, Plaster 12th. Um, that was the uh, full running order. Um, that is so frustrating how, you know, you know how you go through a race and everything's going okay. Everything's fine. But then, then you... For no reason, your internet just dies and starts to reset. It's great. It's, yeah. Anyway. Could have happened to anyone. But it really have been one of my streams if that didn't happen. Anyway. Commentator's Corner then. Let's invite the people who are here. Um, and uh, we'll see what happened. So, uh, Squeezy getting his second win of the season. Scoring the maximum 25 points and bringing himself up into a championship squabble once again. Shortening the amount of points now uh, between himself and uh, Lambo by uh, 7 points for now. And, uh, well, um, no, i got no advertisement. i got nothing, like, nothing in. I just, I can't believe of all the times to die, why did it have to be right there? That the stream just completely gets cut. Anyway, and enough moaning. Because we have our first guest to commentator's corner. And uh, it's Z3. Z3, how are you? Well, I was better until I realised it was going to rain. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the rain added a bit of excitement to that one. But obviously not, not for you. Uh, not at all for me. Rain is first possible outcome for me. Well, um, let talk us through your race. Um, obviously, it was dry. Then we had the safety car, and uh, you pitted in twice. So what was you thinking behind that? Well, I mean, before the race, I looked at the weather, and it didn't look like it was going to rain until like, 20 or later. So when I pitted first under the safety car, I didn't want to pit because I was in the mediums, but uh, in that fast left-hander um, lap before I got wing damage from I don't know what happened it just stopped up in front of me I had to pit, fix that then I was in soft didn't take the they will hold up so I thought well the safety car isn't going in I'm going going to pit, pit back to my old mediums and so was the thinking behind that that you didn't have to uh put on any set of dry tyres, you could just be free to choose, or was it just trying to yeah. make them last as long as you could before the rain? I was just uh, making sure I could uh, make them last until the rain started, because as I said, I thought the rain would start much later than it did. And I was really hoping it was going to start later too, because looking at the weather before the race, it looked like you wouldn't make it if you went on softs. Yeah, um, well, um, talk us what happened um, to retire from the race, because it happened off screen, and of course you can't select a retired car anymore, so what what, what happened? 
Well, I think I think you actually catched my car standing at the side uh, when you watched uh, Squeezy at some point there. It was turn um, three, that le right hander leading up to the fast left hander. Out of that corner, I just the car just slipped away. Got so, some, uh, got a little oversteering, can correct it enough. Oh, okay. Well, um, I know you say the rain's your nemesis, and we're going to a place that, you know, could rain in two different parts of the track and completely dry on another. It's Spa Frankershaw, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of drivers' favourites. I'm assuming it's yours as well, Z3. I hate Spa. You're probably one of the I only drivers. You're probably one of the only people to ever say that. <laughs> you know, I quite liked it before, but I can't get the hang of it on this game. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm driving that that track. So I actually, not... I actually dislike it that much. And every time I race on it, I'm usually going off in a rouge on the first lap or something. Well, um, well, if you're if you are planning to come to uh, is Spa. Um, where would you like to finish? I, I, I feel like being stupid for asking that question, but I would I would like the track to not be on the calendar. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little harsh. Just just just, just cut it out. Just <laughs> I, it. I say Let's the same go thing. Straight up to the next one. <laughs> I I say the same thing about Monaco, but apparently it's a, it's a classic track. CT. It's the same with Spa. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> I, d I don't like Monaco, but I, on this game I actually like Monaco better than Spa. Okay, now now you now you're just being that, crazy. That says something. It, <laughs> before you get before you say anything crazy, C three. Um, <laughs> obviously, I think that's uh, too late. It, uh, well, who knows? It's on stream now. <laughs> that's it for now. Um, yeah, so obviously a tough race for you. Um, it's obviously picking yourself up after this. How how are you going to approach that? Uh, looking towards uh, Italy, I think. Good stuff. Well, thanks for speaking that, that to us. That should be a good track for me. So hopefully, getting some points back there. Yeah, nice one. Well, thank you for speaking to us, Z3. Even after that tough race, once again, um, keep your chin up. I'm sh I'm sure that result will come. <laughs> hopefully. It is the case of the commentator's curse, isn't it? Like, honestly. Uh, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> anyway, um, hopefully we'll see you at Spa Z3. Um, Maybe. Go on, go on, you know you want to. <laughs> I really don't want to. I just... <laughs> Well, hopefully, hopefully you'll uh, you'll be at the circus next time out then. Uh, but thank you very much for talking to C three, and uh, hopefully we'll thank see you. you Tuesday. Definitely. So next driver is Steph. Steph, let's have Hello. a look at the leaderboard. Did you get it? Because the stream cut out. Yes, you did. You actually got the Fernando Alonso the fastest lap you wanted. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it only took four or five races, but you finally got it. Uh, I'll freaking take that off my result today, mate. Yeah, speaking of that, talk us through it. Well, qualifying, like, you know, decent qualifying, wet conditions, you know, felt like home. So, took whatever grid position I got on that one. Start the race, got off to a good, decent start off the line. Um, had like Onyx come up to me on the in inside um, on the straight and I thought okay I'll just venture into the middle because I know what will happen. Uh, turn 1 a little bit you know, chaotic but managed to get through around the outside and then line myself up for the inside so, um, turn 2 <coughs> and kept it right and nice and tight um, around turn 2 and I think it was maybe spike on the inside and obviously dueling into turn 3 you know, kept side by side for it, obviously he came off track but I came back on and obviously Spike was still ahead and took that uh, position. And then it all pretty much came down to the chaotic after turn five where there was like a pile up. Which then don't know how many cars were involved, but I was just um 
trying to avoid it and obviously with one car in front, not sure who, just literally got him away and damaged my wing. Which then obviously dragged out a safety car. I just thought, okay, just get the car to the pits. And then obviously it was on Delta, got into the pit lane entry and in the game decided to give me like a literally drive through penalty. Yeah, I was in the pit lane entry, which then the Delta don't count. And because I was even going to lose time in the way in the pits, so I was changing everything. So I had to go all the way around, obviously, off the safety car. Off the safety car gone in, I'd literally gone pit lane and just literally tried to flip as much as possible the game position. Rain didn't really help, but just trying to push on as much as possible. And then when the rain started drying out and the track drying up nicely, the time tires are looking a bit scuffy. And obviously, I saw like a couple of drivers literally going to drive a bit too early, just thinking yeah, it's a bit too early. And then I looked at my tire life and I just like, yeah, these tires ain't gonna last too long, they're not gonna be griffy enough. Then I had to pit and just literally. So I went on mediums, and then obviously pace went there on mediums, just felt sluggish. And I just thought, okay, sod it, I'd just stick on ultra soft, just do a lap, safe and view, prep it like a qualifying lap, and seeing everyone's doing fastest lap, and I thought, alright, let's see what I can do. And then, yeah, just got the fastest lap of the race, and I'll take that. Yeah, always a positive to take from this race when you get the fastest lap. I know, Lambo would be miffed because he was uh, wanting to take the fastest lap, but I'd just take it underneath his nose, so <laughs> I'm lucky, Lambo. <laughs> I'm sure he'll not be very happy with that, but... Um, oh, he's not. <laughs> well, unlucky to miss out on a point, though, but uh, next track is Belgium. Um, how do you rate your chances? So there it goes. Looking reasonable around there, but... Like from this race, anything can literally happen and everything can be checked, so I'm not going to literally predict anything on that. I'm just going to see, just get to start to finish. If I get points out of it, I'll be happy. If not, then see what happens from there. Yeah, well, Belgium is always a track that likes to sh throw strategy right out of the window. How are you prepared to, you know, cope with the changeable conditions? Changeable conditions, I can, you know, adapt to it. It's not a problem. And obviously, like, dried to wet, wet to dries, or full wets and all full dries. Like, you know, I'm happy, I'm completely adaptable for any conditions. It's just like, the timing wise, you just gotta make sure you time it right. You give it the right bend day, you got the purple streak. So, and um, some people consider uh, Spa to be one of the, the classics, one of the greats. People love going there. What's that track like for you, Sp uh, Steph? Spa is a magnificent track, I actually love it, even like watching it on TV in like real, real life. It's one of those tracks, like, like it is one of like the principal jewels of F1, along with like Monza and Monaco and Japan and Brazil, like, it just stands out from other modern tracks. It's like, you know, some parts you got, uh, like, you know, the old classic gravel traps and stuff to catch you out. You know, you can push your car to limits, you've got average and ready on. Literally, just like going up there, you just feel like adrenaline pumping, and just like, yeah, you can go flat out and just take it all the way up to the comms. Absolutely, and and where was where would be a an ideal finishing position? Again, yeah, try to go for points. <laughs> but, depends what goes on, and what the weather conditions are like, see what happens, but I'll take anything. Well, great stuff. Thanks for talking to us, Steph, and uh, hopefully we'll see you Tuesday for Belgium. Indeed. Don't forget I'll be in the box for tomorrow night, and I'll be definitely be there. Obviously, last week I wasn't there due to um, commitments and stuff, but I'll be definitely be in the box tomorrow night for TTFL. There you go. Advertising done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, thanks for talking to us, Steph, and uh, we shall see you on the box on this channel on Friday then. Well, indeed. I'll see you later on. If you're racing tomorrow night, I'll see you tomorrow night on track. Well, I'm in the box, what you need. <laughs> <laughs> take care of yourself, Steph. And you, mate. Take care. So then, uh, the last person to join us is uh, one of the championship contenders, Spike. It's fair to say that was a bit of a quiet race for you. Would you agree with that? Depends on your definition of quiet, really. Um, in terms of position, finishing, and uh, 
pace wise yeah um, in terms of contact with other cars not so much <laughs> well then talk us through that aspect then uh, I, I, would term, I, I don't I hate qualifying the mid pack because it's just people just I don't know they just want to win the race on the first corner um, uh, he's got previous he did it again this time he got away with it so uh, alright fair enough but there wasn't any room but he pushed he pushed himself through past me literally used my car to turn around the corner but no damage so I guess you know one of those things um, and then after that the safety I mean like, like Z3 said there's no he just what's the, there's no point in looking at that for weather forecast because it doesn't it's just, it's just lies doesn't it because it said it was pretty much near the second third of the race so it's between the soft and the medium and I thought well I'll go for the medium because um, well, because I didn't uh, the other problem was I didn't have I didn't have a setup uh, I've only just got back in time to to do the race tonight so I didn't even have time to to actually to actually save my setup round for uh, for Hungary so I just I think I need my, my my Monaco setup and just changed some of the wings and guessed um, so the car was not great to be honest it was it wasn't terrible but it wasn't great uh, so I was not really not really on the on the front running pace um, anyway uh, so yeah safety car come out and that really screwed anybody over who's on the medium especially I had no tight temperature after that for about three laps took ages for them to come back and then it rained um, so then that was the end of that uh, it was okay on the inters you know again sort of a, the car was a bit sort of doing a bit of oversteer and understeer in certain corners uh, that was okay and then I pitted for dries and I come out of the pit lane and I think it was it was Technic Gaming, yeah. Um, I braked for turn one, but the, the, the front's locked instantly. So I, I cadence braked, did my best to avoid. We made small contact. Um, I gave the position up immediately because um, I knew I'd make contact. So I was like, right, okay, I'm going to give the position up. And then on the very next lap, um, I DRS Technic into turn one. He defended the inside. I braked into turn one alongside him, gave him two possibly three cars width and he still hit me um, and pushed me what and my car half spun I managed to catch it uh, and then yeah after that I was sort of chasing him a couple of laps was quicker other laps he was quicker it's not very not very impressed with uh, you know I, I gave the position back to him but he didn't do the other way around to me so it's not very impressed with that <laughs> Well, let's move on into the next Grand Prix then, Spa. Um, you've been pretty interesting to watch in your qualifying strategy. I'm guessing you're going to pull the same card out. What's the chance of you going on to the uh, soft tyres for qualifying in Belgium? Depends on if they're in the list or not. I don't, I, I don't actually know what the what the tyre allocation is. I can't remember. I think, it's, I think it's os, ultras, softs and mediums. I believe uh, okay. it's choice. I believe it is. Wait, um, no, yeah, I, I don't know yet. I'll, I'll have to see. I mean, to be fair, like today was a bit of a nothing race in the end for me. Like I said, just because of just doesn't have the pace, so I was kind of str I was just struggling a little bit, um, just in general. And then uh, so Spa, you know, I've, hopefully I'll have my actual setup rather than the guest one, uh, and be back on the summer on the pace, and then we'll see. I mean, the ultra, if it is ultras, they'll last two, three laps, and then they'll be dead. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, Spike. Just to just to, just to correction on that. Yeah, it is supers. Uh, it's supers, softs, and mediums. So, is is there a chance then you would think about the softs rather than the supers? Being that there's only one, there's only one step between the two. It would be less likely, um, just because the supers will do. You know, they'll do enough laps to get to the end on. So super to medium, you you do an easy one stop. So that so the the advantage of running us at the harder tire, um, if you do qualify in the top ten, is is they're still there, but it's not it's not as vast as it was at say Germany, where it was a big there was a big difference. Because you couldn't quite make the end of the ultras. Would you say then that qualifying on these tires at Belgium is uh, is a bit of a disadvantage rather than you know pushing to the limit? 
in what sense? Um, what are you saying is quali is qualifying in the first place a, a waste of time? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, is, is, it, a, is it a disadvantage rather than starting lower down the field well, with what, fresher tyres? If you look at how, if you look at Germany with obviously with Lambo who who um, uh, crashed in quality and then started in whatever it was P18 and won the race, then you from that you'd say yes. It depends if you if you can get through the traffic. And not and not lose lose your wing or lose too much time, and then yeah, I mean it it, it will work. But generally, it is still better to qualify because you're at the front. You generally with it's just it's just less cars. You know, you're you're first into turn one, so one of the first cars. So there's less people. You're not not three wide, or in this or at um, in tonight's case was four, nearly four wide at one point. So <laughs> there's a bit of a melee. Um, it's better to be out of the melee. But um, well, we've seen Lambo come from P18 to P1. We've seen Poe in this race come from P19 to P4. I mean, it's a tactic you might have to try, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure both Lambo and Poe didn't. They weren't doing it to to, to deliberately. They, but I think they, I know Lambo. I saw Lambo crash in that at, uh, at Germany. I think Poe did the same. I saw he retired quite early on. So I don't know, but um, no, nah, it's still it's still better to qualify. It's just um, like I said, in, in Germany, it's just a, a special set of, set of circumstances allowed Lambo to get through the through the field very very quickly at the start, which then he was behind me before I even stopped and passed me before I stopped. So that's fine. And then today, Poe, I I don't know, he just. Like I said, personally for me, I just didn't have the pace. If you look at the fastest laps, I was a good second, more than a second off the pace. So that, that and that's just simply down to the fact that the setup was wrong. Because, like I said, I didn't have a chance to to, to, to make, you know, to, to hatch. Because I've got a setup, but I hadn't saved it. So I got into the race and I was like, ah, I don't actually have the set, setup saved. So it's been on the time trial, but it's not not saved. So I had to just borrow one from somewhere else. So I went for Monaco. <laughs> And obviously change the wings, but then and a couple of other bits and pieces um, to try and make the car. It was it was reasonable, but not there was you know it's, it's difficult to quantify what was missing from that time. But it was it was understeering badly, especially for the last corner. I'm sure Poe could testify. He followed me a couple few few laps, uh, so <laughs> it was one of those races. I finished. That was the main thing. I think I think sort of by halfway point, I knew I wasn't really going to be able to affect much of the race. So I just sort of thought, well, let's just make sure I get to the end and put this one down to like I said I just it was just a bit apart from apart from you know I think perhaps I was perhaps I was being a bit nice perhaps I should have just carried on you know not not giving Tenik the position back because obviously he didn't he didn't do the same thing for me the next lap so there you go that might it, it, uh, I mean at the end of the day it, it doesn't matter he might have been a pass me and the gap um, the gap by the end of the race is it's certainly not it's not a serious incident. It's, if anything, you know, it's, it would only have been something like a minor, probably, if even if that. So it really, that wouldn't have made a difference to the position. But I just feel like, you know, I'm racing to what I think is etiquette and rules, and some people aren't. Well, strong words there from Spike to round off this, uh, this commentator's corner. But thank you very much for speaking to us, Spike. Really appreciated. You're welcome. And uh, we'll see you on Tuesday for Belgium then. Yeah, that's right. I'll put my handbag away now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one. Well, thanks anyway, Spike. I will see you next time. No worries, mate. Nice one, mate. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. And uh, thus rounds off Commentator's Corner and tonight for uh, the Hungarian Grand Prix. Um, well, it wouldn't be a stream if the stream didn't cut out as Lambo was crossing the line, but, you know, what can you do? Um, but as we heard from those three drivers, it's been tough. But uh, most of them are looking forward to uh, Belgium, I think. Two-thirds of them, at least. Anyway, uh, you can watch the Belgian Grand Prix on Tuesday here on TTTV F1 uh, with me. Hopefully, I'll be here for the Tuesday for the uh, for the Belgian Grand Prix. As Steph mentioned as well, you can also watch TTFL on this channel Fridays. Uh, and uh, you can watch that at around uh, 5 to 8 uh, p.m. BST is when it normally gets underway uh, and on okay. Sundays of course oh, oh hello Steph is here <laughs> it won't be on my channel it will be on um, be on TV don't you worry about that <laughs> you know what I'm 
I'm having a brain fade, Steph. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All right. I'll just end by saying you can also catch TTL F2, um, which is approaching the halfway mark. That will be Germany and Hungary uh, this coming Sunday, 25% races. Uh, we'll see if Oli can hold off from Z3 and Mays in the uh, championship hunt. But for then and for now, uh, it's time to bring the stream to a close. I've been Kieran McGinley. You've been watching. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time.